It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the forum here on Eagle Community Television. It's a special edition of our forum program. First off, though, the forum's brought to you by Hayes Med. Our guest today is the brand new president of Fort Hayes State University. Welcome, Dr. Martin. Thank you for having me here. It's great to be here. It's great to be at Hayes, and it's great to be part of the Fort Hayes State University family. You know what? When you talk about new, you know, it's been a long time, since 1987, I believe, since we've had a new president at the university. And you have the job, the opportunity to be here. You're just in that learning curve. What have you done so far in about the two or three weeks since you've got the job? Well, let's see. I have, this is my second time back home in Hayes. Uh, the, just because we wanted to go ahead and, and hit the ground running come July the 1st. So I've been able to meet with an awful lot of people from the community, an awful lot of people from Fort Hayes State University. And my main thing is I want to begin to know people for who they are part of my family. And that's what I've done for the past two weeks. I know you went through quite a process in, in looking for the job and, and mm -hmm. applying for the job. I know it went on for days and probably <laughs> weeks. Months. Yeah, months. Tell us a little bit about that process. And I know the selection went to, went to the Board of Regents. Yes, sir. They selected you. What, in, in a nutshell, how'd that process work for you? Well, let's see. You know, it, it really started with a phone call from the consultant saying you've been nominated. Uh, three, from three individuals and I've looked over your resume and there, there seems to be a good fit. And so I said to him, you know, I'm very honored, but I need to do my due diligence because I'm looking for a home. It, it's not just about what's on paper, it's about tugging at the heartstrings. And I did the due diligence. And you looked uh, on the map and, and I said, looked at the map. Hayes, Kansas, where yes, is that? I actually did that and I, not only did I do that, I, do the, I did the Google Earth so mm -hmm. that I could see the university and I could see the town. It's incredible what technology does these days. Mm -hmm. And so I was for, I went ahead and applied, and I thought, yes, there's indeed a good match, and, and certainly the city and, and the community seem to be those, have those qualities that my husband and John and I are looking for, which is familial values, a good, strong work ethic. And so I, I was fortunate enough to receive the phone call and said, okay, so you made it through the first order of business, and you're one of the uh, semifinalists, and the interview took place in Kansas. So I got to Kansas and um, got there um, the day and rented a vehicle and drove up to Hayes America and to Fort Hayes State University because, you know, how can I talk to a group of people who do not know me about I'm the right person when I haven't been at the university, when I haven't been part of the city? How can I say I'm it? So I drove on up here and got lost in a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that tells... Now you drove from Kansas City uh -huh. to Hayes. Yes. Okay, and, and so you got to see the train in Kansas and I, all that. I got all Had you that? been here before? Never, never. And I, I got lost at Fort Hayes State University, and that spoke a lot volumes about what I was looking for because I would say to someone, I'm looking for, and they would say, let me take you. That speaks a lot about the culture of a town. And the same thing when I drove around Hayes. And so... I went back, I got back to the hotel that night about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning for a 10 o'clock interview and I thought, this is really bright. I'm going to look like I am tired and for and an interview and, and traveling all and all of that. This is not the best foot forward, but you know, I needed to do it for me so that I could speak that there is indeed a match. And then the rest is history, one after the other one. From there we went on to a campus interview with my husband and I, we spent three days here and fell in love with the place. And I, I thought it was almost prophetic because at home, my, uh, our church is St. Joseph and it's called St. Joe's. And of course, the first time as I'm driving here, St. Joseph Joe's, was called St. Joe's. And I thought, okay, Lord, uh, you're giving me a sign. And you know, after spending three days on campus and with community, John and I knew that this was a place we could call home. We just, we felt part of the community. We were touched by the people we met. Um, and the ad, the ad, the profile came true. One of the things that attracted me when I applied was the fact that of all of the profiles for precedence that I had ever read, the Fort Hay State University profile said that they were looking for someone who, they, who wanted to lead in, with, in, in a caring community and that has, had a strong work ethic. And that's what I have found here. 
the work ethic of the pioneers of the Midwest is alive and well in Fort Hayes and Kansas in Hayes. And that's what I've grown up with. Those are my values. And the caring community, the embracing community, the relationship, you know, that's who I am. It's all about relationship. It's all about family. It's all about being one. And so even though I move permanently the 1st of July, this is home already. I notice you've call, called it home a couple That's of times right. already. It is. You know, you, you make a move like this and you do what you do as a, you know, you're head of a school of business now. It takes a lot of energy and people <laughs> have described that says, Dr. Martin just has a lot of energy. <laughs> and I can see that, but it's gonna take a lot as, as you make this transition to make it this is. happen. Tell me about your background. Why do you have so much energy? Where did that all start? Because you have a unique background mm -hmm. that, you know, there's immigrants from all over the world are here in mm -hmm. Ellis County. They are. You came a little different route through Cuba, which right. is quite interesting. Tell us about your background. Just well, uh, thank you. You know, I, uh, as you said, I, I left Cuba uh, with my grandmother on a leap of faith. She was a remarkable lady. I have two individuals that, I, I give an awful lot of credit to I'm both guessing grandmothers. This leap, this leap of faith comes in several times several along your times. career because I've seen that Absolutely. in your resume. Absolutely. And, but you know, it started with that person who really embodied that leap of faith. And, and my grandmother was left Cuba with the clothes on her back, not one penny to her name to go to Spain to give us freedom because she knew that once the frontiers in Cuba had been sh shut down, the regime chose who was going to leave the island, how they were going to leave it, to what destination and with whom. And so they chose my grandmother and two small girls. We were five and four, my sister, and they shipped us via Spain. That happened to be my grandmother's, our, our family's ancestral uh, lands. And she left with the clothes on her back. And throughout her life and the life of her family, she had built convents throughout Spain and then throughout Cuba. So the Mother Superior in Cuba wrote the Mother Superior in Madrid, and it was the nuns who came to pick us up at the airport. And they gave us a small little room, hoping that the rest of the family would follow. And so I grew up in a convent. And I went to school in a convent because, as you know, most of Europe, the girl goes to school with nuns mm -hmm. and the boys with fires. And so we tried to get our family out and that didn't materialize. So the American consulate said, well, maybe if you come to the States, you can go ahead and achieve that. And so we did the process to get our green cards and immigrate to the United States, yet another leap of faith. I spoke four languages, none of which were English. <laughs> I had been raised in a convent and gone to school in a convent with girls. And I was thrown in the middle of a co-ed environment. Um, but you know, it, it was destined to be because as, because of that second leap of faith, my mother and two brothers were able to then leave Cuba and they immigrated as I was getting ready to go away to Duke. Um, and there I met my husband, uh, freshman week, and we started day by Christmas. Uh, dated the whole four years and got married a week after we graduated. And being from Virginia, we made Virginia our home. And so we left um, Durham and went on to Richmond. Uh, been there for 30 years, raised two great children, Catherine and Patrick. Catherine is a doctoral student, a PhD student, uh, trying to solve the puzzle of autism. Mm. And Patrick is a third year, actually a, a rising fourth, which is a senior at the University of Virginia uh, in World Studies. And what pleases us me most about both of my kids. They're wonderful kids and, and they're certainly very bright, but they've embraced our values of integrity and honor, of hard work and in giving back to others, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because we believe in improving the human condition. And so when we wanted to give them roots, and that's why we stayed in Virginia, we looked after our older parents who have, John's parents who have now passed. I was mm -hmm. looking after our grandmother who has now also passed. And so when that occurred, we, we decided this is the time that we can again become about us, about passing our work forward with first generation students to create an affordable and accessible education to ensure that American supremacy in the world remains alive and well 
because that can only be achieved through education. And, and we're both John and I and my children are very, very committed to that endeavor. And, and so when we started to look for a place to call home, this came on the map and we have found a home. You know what, we're excited. I know as a community, I'm talking to other people, excited to having you here because yeah. uh, Dr. Hammond has created a great yes. university it's here incredible. with the help of the, the faculty and staff over there. You don't have to go very far no. and, and you find people outside our community say, what a great school that yes. is. Students that come here, what a great school. So going forward, you have Dr. Hammond, who's That's going right. to stay in the community. Yes. How's that relationship going to work? Oh, he's phenomenal, you know, and you're absolutely right. What Fort State University has done, uh, you talk about leap of faith. It is nothing short of a leap of faith united with a miracle because the vision to create these virtual college and the China partnership to all whereby there's a common element and that is student centeredness, student success, innovation, entrepreneurship. It just brings it all together. It's about who I am and, and, and the foundation is there. I often speak, you know, John is, is, um, is in construction and my, interestingly enough, all of my male relatives on both sides, brothers, fathers, grandfathers, or have all been engineers and architects. So I speak often about with that analogy of, of building a home, of building a foundation, the foundation to launch us forward as the premier school of the 21st century in Kansas has already been laid. And it's expansive enough that it's not just enough to hold a four, five, six story building, we are going to build the Empire State Building at Fort Hay State University. And we're going to expand what has already been done with meticulous care to maintain excellence in the rigor of the programs, but then expanding our stretch for the benefit of Kansas, for the benefit of our nation and then of the world. And Dr. Hammond will pay, play a, a critical role. You know, I've been blessed throughout my life to have incomparable mentors. And I look at him as such, as being able to see where we've been and then guide me where I'm going. Um, I'm very practical, you know, I, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. That's stupid. That, that's silly. It's a waste of time. What I do believe in doing is making it more efficient, stronger, and better. The wheel has been built. Now we're going to expand it. Now we're going to build it more efficiently. And we're going to go forward in making sure that my vision is to make Hayes and Fort Hayes State University the destination of choice not just for students, not just for faculty, but for the world. And we can do that. I know we can do that. Well, you had to, and it's exciting to hear you talk about that type of thing. When you drove into Fort Hayes, because you looked at it on a map mm -hmm. and you Googled around, when you drove into the campus around mm -hmm. Fort Hayes State, what did it feel like? Were you surprised? Were you like, this is interesting, I didn't expect this? What words would you use to describe that? I was filled with a spiritual peace of this is where I belong. That, uh, and that peace, you know, I, I drove into campus for a long, for the first time by myself as the president elect this week. And not only, again, that feeling of total and complete peace, but just excitement energy, just, I can't wait to get here. Um, that has been pervasive throughout. And, you know, people say to me, you must be overwhelmed. No, I'm not. I, I'm just, I feel that I have the support, the love, the caring uh, guidance of, of individuals already that I have met and that I have yet to meet. And that makes it very reassuring, very reassuring. And, you know, I believe in dreaming big, and then bringing it down. And we're going to do that. We're going to dream big, but then we're going to bring it down and make it a reality. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about some of those Thank realities. If we, if we can do that. Great. Okay, we're going to take you. a break and come back. Our guest is a new president at Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Martin. Back with more after this.
youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines. Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com. It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back to the second half of our program here. The ECTV Forum is brought to you by Hayes Med. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, suggestions, send them to me. You can always find me at gary.shorman at egocom.net. You can also find us on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, look under ECTV Forum. We'll find you there. like to hear from you. Again, our guest is Dr. Martin, the new president at Fort Hayes State University. Now, you asked me to call you by your first name. That's right. And, and I'll do this. It's Mirta Martin. Mirta. Mirta Martin. And there, you know, you're, did you're I do right. okay you with that? You did great. You know, as, as a university president, though, you come with a certain amount of respect. Mm -hmm. You already have your tiger pin <laughs> on. You are, you're already ready to go for this. And you talked about dream because somewhat the vision that's Fort Hayes State University, you talked about that before our break. It's just been so good. How are you going to add to that? What dreams do you have that you can bring down and say, we're going to start working on some new dreams for Fort Hayes State University? What are those dreams? You know, there, there, there are so many dreams about creating opportunities um, for our students, for our faculty, for our communities. Um, it's, it's not about me. It's about us, you know. And part of the thing that I do and that I believe in is it's not what I want. It's what we want. Okay, and so the first months, the first year, it's going to be a lot about listening. Uh, my grandmother used to say that you have two ears so that you can hear twice as often as you can speak. And this is a time to hear what people want, what people see. And I will tell you, I've been listening to faculty already and, and family members of the Hayes community and business leaders like, who, like you, have opened their hearts and their places. And there's an awful lot of ability, an awful lot of intellect, an awful lot of, of, of ideas that are out there. I think my ideas kind of are, are a 50,000 foot view, if you would. My ideas, my dreams, as I said earlier, is to become the destination of choice, not just for Kansas, but for the nation and for the world. And so what do we need to do that? Well, we, you know, I, I would like to look at programs that do not yet exist so that we can jump the curve and develop them. To do that, we need to understand what industry needs so that because we, you are the recipient of our product. And what I want to do in becoming that destination of choice is to ensure that the talent that is within our state stays within our state. I want to become the importer of talent as opposed to the exporter of talent. So, you know, in essence, what do you do to get there? You need to build it. If, the, the, if the, you build it, they will come. So, so, so perhaps we're looking at, you know, biotech parts, for example, that can take someone's idea, dream, and take it from idea to product creation to product launch, okay, through an incubator approach. And then because they've done that, then we spin them off and they become a, a business. I talk about a lot becoming an economic multiplier. You know, in that example, we can partner with some of the other senior institutions who may have law schools so that we can create, we can allow that inventor, that innovator, that scientist to be able to get to where he needs to go and go through all of the contractual nuances that need to occur. Again, you're bringing in talent and you're bringing and keeping that talent here. If you do that, then we go back to the K through 12 system. 
you know, you need to, we need to be in the communities. We need to be able to build that loyalty so that student understands that at Fort Hayes, they're going to get a second to none education and that they will have opportunities here that they will have nowhere in the state or in the nation so that if they want to do research, we've got the, the scientists with whom they can partner to do their research. I don't need to tell you that these days, these kids are doing research when they're 12, 13, 14, 15, they, they have these, patents, just, they have yeah, one yeah. of those. And so wouldn't it be neat to be able to say, I don't need to leave my home state to do the research that I want because at Fort Hayes State University, we can find it there. And, and that research is through service, through product development, through, through patents that create sustainable sources of income, not just for the university, but for the town, for our region. Um, those are things that we need to explore very honestly. What, what programs are there that we could capitalize upon that are not out there yet but will bring people to us and will allow them to stay? We need to look at the infrastructure of the university. How do we provide housing, affordable housing for the young minds, for the talent, for the scientists, for the professors? Uh, maybe we create private public partnerships uh, to do that. So it's a very expansive approach that creates unity as opposed to silos. You know, it's not what you're doing or what I'm doing, so we can do together. What the business community can do with the academic community that can do with the intellectual community that can do with the scientific community. At the end of the day, what we ought to do is to make life better for the people of Kansas and for the world to improve that human condition. And I believe that we have the ability, we have the intellect, we have the hard work ethic to be able to make all those dreams a reality. And so I'm going to be listening for proposals. I'm going to be listening to, to how do we unite us as one and, and create the family of innovation, of entrepreneurship, of, of Fort Hay State University that makes the difference in Hayes, in Kansas, and in the world. Well, you know what, I, uh, a smart interview would just end the interview right there and be <laughs> done with it. But I do have two quick questions, and I want just China program mm -hmm. and online learning. Yes. And those two things, where do we go from here? Because it's already, those are already really great programs. They are. How do we go from there? How do we build on those? We maximize what we already have. We maximize the, the innovation. We maximize the rigor. We maximize the excellence. And then we flip it. For example, China program is an incredible program. What we need to do is now partner with countries throughout the world to spread our footprint. You know, we were, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I think that the best example that I can give you as far as taking that China program or that virtual program is the old, and it's interesting that today would be D-Day, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you think of the might of our men in D-Day, of what they accomplished that no one thought that could be accomplished, um, what a sacrifice, and you and I are here because mm -hmm. of that. And so I, I wish to pay tribute to those men uh, who gave their lives so that I could have freedom and so my children could have freedom because, you know, freedom for me is, is as you can imagine, is, mm -hmm. is, an, is an unalienable right. But if you go then go one step back and you think about the English Empire, the sun never sets on the English Empire, right? Mm -hmm. My vision is the sun shall never set on the Fort Hastie University Family Empire. And we can do that through the virtual college, and we can do that by duplicating what has already been done in China, by partnering with, with countries, be it Germany, be it Finland, be it Spain, be it Brazil, be it Mexico, be it Botswana. You know, we can do that and expand our footprint. Still though, we need to educate the world, but still we need to bring it home to educate our kids first. You know, we cannot teach the world how to fish if we don't know how to fish ourselves. And I am committed, my life's work has been to create affordable, an accessible education because that's the way of achieving the American dream. I'm a visual pathway of what can be achieved with hard work, with sacrifice, but with an education. And I want to make sure that 
the children of Kansas, the children of the United States, have access to that American dream through education. And that's what I plan to do at Fort Hayes State University. How can our community help as we wrap things up here? There'll be people that'll watch this and there'll be people that will hear about you. And how can the community help you achieve what you're wanting to do? You know, it's all about family. And what the community can do is to become part of the Fort Hayes State University family by means of sharing with us ideas, by volunteering to give that practical application to our students. You know, one of the programs that I started back east is a shadow program where our students spend a day with you. You know, not filing papers or answering phones. I may want to spend a day with them. It might be more fun. Can no, I do but, that? But that, that? Absolutely. <laughs> and vice versa. Will you come into the classroom so our community members can do that? They can think of partnerships. You know, it's not, again, part of my life used to be in, in, in fundraising. I call it French racing because I'm trying to make mm -hmm. a friend. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's the, the what I, I always said is I'm looking for people who have the affluence or the influence. We certainly need the investment because, you know, there, there are many of our students. I just had one student that I'm very thankful took the initiative and trusted me enough to, to, to email and said, you know, I'm $700 short of being able to come back to campus. I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that doesn't seem like a lot for a lot of people but it's a lot for that child, and it's a difference in his life. So we need those gifts of, of funding, certainly, to bridge that gap. But we also need the, the, the gifts of influence, of being able to open doors that have yet to be opened, of keeping your antennas up to see what could be. And, and when you travel through the country or the world and say, oh, they're doing that over there, wouldn't it be neat if we did it at Fort Hayes State University mm -hmm. back in Hayes, America? And so I have an open door policy. You know, come and visit with me, share with me your ideas. Become part of the family of Fort Hayes State University. We are family. And that's the message that I want to tell everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're faculty, whether you're staff, whether you're a student. The fact that you're in Kansas, you're family of Fort Hayes State University. Come on in and come on back. All right, let's end with a go tiger, right? Go tigers. <laughs> go tigers. Thanks for watching our forum program. Thank you. And, and Dr. Martin, thank Myrta. you for Dr. Mirta Martin. Just, thank you for being a no part doctor, of No doctor, just Mirta. Thank you, Mirta. There for you being go. A part of our program today. Thank you for thank being you. here. Look forward to many great things to come Absolutely. at Fort Hayes State University. Thank you. Thank you all. Programs been brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communication. Our community connected. Youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines. Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com.